YouTube friends and family, it's another edition of the Carolina Sports Guy. Today we're going to be talking about the 1978 Duke Blue Devils. Yes, the basketball is finally put back on the map with Duke, and I think this was a big stepping stone for Coach K guy there to put in basketball as a dominant blue blood power in the country. First, if you have not subscribed to this channel, please do so. It doesn't cost anything, it's free of charge. Hit that like button. Let me know you like content, like what's in today's video, and let me know in comments that what other videos you'd like to see or what you didn't like about the video. And by all means, hit that bell notification so you can be notified of future content on this channel when it's available. All right, folks, I started doing one. I, I did a video on UNC Charlotte basketball and following it back up the very next year, 1978 Duke Blue Devils. They were a special team. I was a little kid at the time. Very wee little lad. They were led by head coach Bill Foster. Uh, this team kind of put Duke back on the map. Uh, you know, Duke, I think 64 had been to the Final Four, if I'm not mistaken. And Wake had been in 62, and they've never been back. Um, but in the 50s and 60s, Duke had a prominent basketball program. They were very dominant. It was Carolina and Duke and NC State. Wake Forest had a good team. Tobacco Road was full of great basketball. But as we get into the early 70s, Duke starts to fall off. And Bill Foster comes in. They're going to finish uh, the 1977-78 season as AP number seven in the country when the polls closed. They finished 27-7 and seven that year. Now, Duke finished in second place in the ACC, which was they were 8-4, and four, behind 9-3 UNC. Now, Starting the season out, they played December 2nd, 1977. They played in what they called the Big Four Tourney. This tournament lasted about 11 years, and it was between NC State, Duke, North Carolina, and Wake Forest. UNC beats Duke for Duke's first loss in 79-66. Now, this game does not count as part of the ACC regular season record, uh, but it does count as your overall record, and it went into fight during the polls. And the reason why they stopped playing the Big Four, because normally North Carolina and Duke, even Wake Forest and yes, NC State were strong enough. They just felt like they were getting hammered early on, and it was kind of a disadvantage to play in such top competition before the ACC schedule started. After that game, they play about a week later, and they go out to the West Coast, play Southern Cal, and they lose that game 87 to 81 in overtime. So Duke, you know. Playing rival Carolina loses. Then they go out and play USC on the West Coast and lose. Now, as ACC conference play begins, Duke hits their stride. They're doing pretty good. Um, January 7th, 1978, they play NC State, and they get hammered, 74-50. to um, Now, after this game, Duke is going to play some very competent basketball for the most part. Um, January 25th, a few weeks later, Duke's moved up to number 11 in the polls. They're going to end up losing to Virginia. But Virginia was number 18, so it wasn't a slouch. They lost to Virginia 74-73, to a one-point game, two top 25-ranked schools. Um, and that was going to make Duke fall and suffer a little bit. So then we get about a week and a half later, they go to Wake Forest to play on Wake Forest. Duke's ranked number 17. Like I said, they've dropped some. And Wake Forest hammers them 79 to 60. Uh, it's going to be a while, and Duke is building up. They're a young squad, and we'll get to some of the players on that team because they were dominant. But Duke end up end of the season, regular season, February 25th. They're playing UNC. Carolina's ranked number eight. Remember, Carolina had beaten them in that Big Four tourney back in November. Carolina's ranked number eight. Duke is ranked number 13th. Carolina again beats them 87-83, a hotly contested game. But from that moment on, Duke would not lose another game until we get to the NCAA championship. So, Duke wins the ACC championship tournament that year. Yes, they get in there. Don't have to play Carolina. I think they were upset by Virginia, if I'm not mistaken. They play Wake Forest, who's somebody they lost to, and they end up beating Wake Forest 85-77 to get the ACC berth through the, the tournament championship. Now, the first round of the tournament, they had a tough game the first go-around. They ended up playing Rhode Island. 
and they squeak out a 63-62 victory. I think a lot of that had to do with the youngest, even though they had very athletic quality players. They had just tournament tested. They weren't quite ready, but they did pull out a victory. Now next, in the second round, they played Penn. Now Penn, people don't realize this, from the Ivy League, Penn was a basketball powerhouse. Penn was number 20 in the country. But Duke gets a victory. They muster one out, 84-80 in this game. Then we move on to the third round. It's the game right before the Final Four. They hammer Villanova, who's a Big East school. They are a basketball school. They hadn't won a championship until later on um, when they, about 10 years later, I believe, or less than that, probably about seven years later. Uh, but Villanova won a couple championships. But they were a fairly competent Big East basketball school. But Duke beat some 90-72 to to move on to the Final Four. Now, once getting to the Final Four, they got a hot contest. They played number six, Notre Dame, who's heavily favored. Duke musters a victory. They move on to the championship game. Now, however, in the championship game, they've got to play Kentucky. And Kentucky was a bear. Uh, Kentucky was ranked, I believe, number one that year. Kentucky ends up winning the game 94 to 88. Very close throughout. Kentucky pulls away late. Now, when we look at this, it's going to be several years before Kentucky gets, I mean, Duke gets back to the national championship. In fact, by this time, Mike Krzyzewski is going to take over. Bill Foster leaves in a couple of years. Krzyzewski comes in in the early 80s. And he's going to take him about four or five years. He's going to have Duke playing for a championship in 86 but still lose. But as he approaches the 90s, like I said, 10 to 12 years out, they're going to start winning championships. But this team here kind of put recruits back on the map to Duke. It also put Duke back in that national prominence picture and put him on the rise as a blue blood basketball power. We look at the players on this team. They were led in 1978 by a junior, Jim Spinarkel, point guard. He was a first round pick by Dallas in 1979. Their very first year was the very first basketball player the Dallas Mavericks ever drafted. Um, they also had a center by the name of Mike Jaminski. He was just a sophomore, very good player. Uh, he went in the 1980 draft first round to the New Jersey Nets. 1981, Duke had two, they had two freshmen on that 7018. Gene Banks, who was highly noted, he would be a second round pick of San Antonio. And you think, why wouldn't the first round? Well, remember, we only had 23 NBA teams in 81. And he was about the 27th pick. If it was today's times, he would have been a first round pick. And he also had another freshman who wasn't as highly regarded as Gene Banks, but he was very good and played a prominent role in that 78 Duke team, Kenny Denard. And he would be a fourth-round pick of the Kansas City Kings in the 1984 draft, which was equivalent to being drafted in the third round. And of course, the NBA doesn't have that anymore, but he would have been invited to a camp. Um, but Spinarkel, Jaminski, and even Gene Banks had pretty good NBA careers. Uh, like I said, this... 78 championship game kind of put recruits back on the map going to Duke again. It put Duke back in that national picture of college basketball. And it was really the beginning of the stepping stone uh, when Bill Foster exit and Mike Jaminski, I mean, Mike Krzyzewski comes in, takes over that program. And like I said, within about a decade, a little more, he's got them playing for national championships. Okay, guys, what do you think of today's video? If there's any questions you have or any comments you'd like to make, what would you have added? What would you have taken out? If you like content of this, please hit, hit the bell notification to be notified of future content like this. And we'll see you next time on another episode of Carolina Sports Guy.